rockin' to the ancient rhythm Rockin' to the ancient rhythm Love is my religion Love is my addiction African tradition And they talking about reparations The liberals Wait, the liberals? The same liberals. What did the liberals say about reparations again? The liberals again? are talking about reparations. Are they being... And the, their policies mm -hmm. put niggas in prison on a mass level that no one has seen in the world over nonviolent drug offenses. The irony of it, isn't it? And called it war on drugs. And they invest in the private prisons. And they build it and, and send niggas to the private prisons. And the private prisons have stopped. And the more niggas they send to the private prisons, more that, was, that was selling a pound of a weed, which is now legal now. They gone from their family in 20 years. Whatever operations. They spent 20 years in prison. How do you give that oh, back? Oh shit, it's legal now. What the fuck? Imagine they're this illusion that they're going to come out feeling. They're gonna insist, now it's legal in 30 and you, and you And now you release me when it's legal. And you tell me there. That's fascinating to me. What do they expect the person to do? I mean, what other options do they have? Would you be a terrorist, Kurt? You'd be mad as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm. Uh, I, I was still betrayed by America. Uh, oh, you go a prisoner for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. I can see that perspective. Yeah. I'm not rehabilitated, and, it's, and, and marijuana is legal. Yeah. Can you imagine that, though? Yeah. It's a dis like I said before, disillusion. I was, I walked, I, I, work, I walked out of prison worse than I came in. Yeah, exactly. And 20 years of your life is gone. Thank you. That's the worst part of it. You didn't raise your kid. Yeah. Time is the only valuable thing in, in this world, years. as a matter of fact, from some perspective. You know? <laughs> You'd be tired, wouldn't you be? Oh, I would literally... Sh That's the thing. They're so happy they're out, they see that as a blessing in, it in itself. That's true, man. Like, like, they, like the government did them a favor. Mm -hmm. Commute your sentence. Yeah, we, we, we did you a favor, man. There you are finally, buddy. <laughs> figure out the world, buddy. It's real nice 20 years later. Meanwhile, the the jobs that they knew existed that don't they can't no one does that no more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're like, wait, what the fuck? I gotta pay rent. Do you know how fast the world goes now, bro? Damn bro, I'm fifty years old. They got Shit. They got computers on the They got laptops? You yeah, don't know how to use a laptop or email, you fuck. <laughs> you know? Can you imagine coming out and seeing your FaceTime? Boosie. Free your mind, no prison. Stop for the television. I love nuclear fission. This year has been nuts. I knew Nipsey was sort of kind of a on the way to that, cause after he slapped that dude at the BET Awards, I knew he was gonna get payback for something like, something like retribution, like in a weird. We didn't we talk about this when it happened? Way, in a weird universal way. I feel like we know? talked about this when it happened. We were like, whoa. Yeah. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, of course, no one should lose their lives because of some exactly. some small. But but the thing is, that's an incident that was caught on camera, right? So that says a lot to his. You, you, would you say his character? I wouldn't say his character at the moment. It was obviously a heated emotional reaction. Maybe he wasn't taught to really- At an award body. show, at an award show. Yeah, of course, but you know, the guy was definitely out of line, but as a celebrity, you have the obligation to, to keep face, you know? I think he, need, he needs emotional um, intelligence, you know? I think emotional he needs to, intelligence. To work on that, and I, I think women in particular are, are really good at uh, sometimes allow you know reading emotion oh, you know fixing or helping men out develop their emotional intelligence but anyways 
Back to uh, the terrible murder that happened. Rest in peace, Nipsey. Yeah, bro. Nipsey, uh, Nipsey, Which Jesus Christ. By... That was crazy. That completely changed a lot of, like, way I saw some things, at least. Can we talk about how it was predicted, though? Um, like, there's some conspiracy theories yeah, about, about the Kobe Bryant death. That's so, that's so weird, man. The whole thing is, like, it almost seems like it almost makes you start to question the validity of your reality, right? Exactly. When when things start to align, and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. How all the investigations just stopped. How What's exactly? Going on with this plane, you know. And can we please? Can someone please clarify? Because of course, I don't know everything. Uh, I don't have all the information. I don't have all the facts. But I'm still not 100% certain of what happened to the helicopter, Thank you. and why. Why isn't there an ongoing? I mean, I'm sure there might be an ongoing investigation that I'm unaware of, but the fact that the helicopter just fell out of the sky. And why is Vanessa Bryant suing the helicopter operator? Operator. Huh. You, know? you see, a lot of things just aren't adding up, and I'm starting to think that um, because before a helicopter takes off, there should be due I diligence. It was the fog. Why, what, what is this negligent death now? You know. This, so, so I thought it was the fog. So, okay, so fire. I heard there was a fire within the within the helicopter. Cockpit. Um, I heard uh, I heard turbulence. Exactly. I heard turbulence, um, and uh, I heard that the the, the helicopter Ele because elevation. of elevation because the helicopter was was trying to land in the foggy like he said in a foggy area, and uh, I guess he misjudged. But at the same time, how can you tell me that's human error? There's so many many there's so many um um sort of systems at built. It's not human accidental error. That's what I'm saying exactly, which is the, which is what which that's is, which is what human error is. Mm -hmm. It was purposeful. It's, it seems it seems like it because seems to be. there are many systems designed to prevent human error from happening, especially when you're dealing with carrying other human beings abroad uh, an aircraft. Mm -hmm. There's there, there, there's, like bro, you don't you don't misjudge the height of the ground because there's the instruments in there that would tell you you're approaching the ground. Well, the radars that can see through fog. Unless you're telling me, unless you're telling me that that Kobe radar, right? had a had a had a had a had a toy helicopter or something, which doesn't make any sense to me. You know. Rocking to the ancient rhythm. Rocking to the ancient rhythm. Yeah, and people have actually reacted quite differently when it comes to like just trauma, right? Like you can say that. Kobe passing away could be a traumatic event to some people. Mm -hmm. Same with Nipsey. If they're cultural icons, right? So, what's your perspective on, on how people deal with trauma? It seems like they're quite... There's a multitude of ways that people might, um, or I guess, handle it. And, um, you know, speak, speak to that. Well, some people may dismiss trauma because they don't want to confront the realities that the trauma has brought to their psyche mm -hmm. some people may something we're all guilty of so. yeah of course we can lie to ourselves and change and distort our reality and and pretend that the trauma doesn't exist mm -hmm. and the brain sometimes actually does that naturally when it's, it's things are too traumatic it's a defense mechanism yeah it's like a fuse for your mind so your mind is okay go crazy it's like shutting off one of the the connections so that bad connection that bad apple doesn't affect the other neurons the other synapses firing absolutely you know? that's from a biological from a biological mm -hmm. perspective you know wow this is beautiful because it's kind of like synonymous with, like i said before with the analogy i made with uh, a fuse so if the whole point of a fuse is to prevent uh the equipment from being completely damaged so when, whenever there's some sort of uh, electrical issues, the fuse blows up, and the fuse is just a connection that basically allows um, the system to function. And once the fuse blows up, the rest of the system stays intact, but just the fuse blows up, and then now you can figure out, you can do a diagnosis to find out what the problem is. And it's, it's kind of similar like that, right? Um, but uh, going back to your point about, um, about how people handle trauma, some people are not very good at handling trauma. No. Some people are not very good at um, at uh, expressing or or at least um, um, going past the trauma because you, you, you're gonna have to get over it at some point. Or you'll you'll just be 
stuck in a victim phase. Absolutely. It seems like that's something that a lot of our generation, uh, uh, people in our generation, and when I say that, I'm referring to millennials, as they call them, um, how they deal with trauma. Um, and not just trauma, but how they deal with pretty much everything these days. Like, life is sort of trauma. The whole point of life is to actually, at least in my perspective, is to overcome shit, right? Yep. Because when you overcome stuff, that's when you actually feel alive. That's why some people can have everything and not be happy. Exactly. People who've even worked for it to, to have everything and still not be happy. Still not be happy. Not just people who have inherited riches, you know. And, and, and even from a chemical perspective, whenever you achieve something that was difficult, your body rewards you. Exactly. Dopamine. I'm not sure if it's serotonin or dopamine, but one of those... One it of those definitely be both. One of those, um, is both. I think it is both. Wow. So our body actually makes us feel good when we experience something bad and then get over it. That's why people give. Feels good. It's good for society. It's egalitarian, you know? It's a win-win. So having a, a very easy life, a life where you get everything you want, isn't the path to happiness from that perspective, right? Having a challenge in life to accomplish things that would make you feel fulfilled is the true path to happiness. So do you, does that, do you think that our generation is doing it the complete opposite? We're not doing it the right way. We're chasing the wrong things. We're chasing what we see on, on uh, social media. Not me at all. Material. I'm chasing the, the journey, you know. It takes, it takes a long time. It takes development. It takes the troughs. It takes the stagnancy. It takes... And learning from mistakes. It takes, you know, the triumphs. The ups and, and downs. When all that comes full circle, then that experience is what you value. But now, things have been pre presented sort of upside down. We don't see the bottom of the glacier. We Absolutely. see the tip of the iceberg. That's the wealth, you know, the the money. That's the, all we the focus girls, on, you know. The cars, the, the, the houses. Music has propagated that most certainly. From a cultural perspective. But it's only because we've allowed it to happen. Or maybe it's just the natural evolution of, of our culture. Maybe we're supposed to go through this phase of disorientation before we figure things out. It may be sort of like a uh, a lapse between, I agree, it may be because we're headed towards the, the you know, the... Um, singularity. Singularity. Since Sing we're headed towards the singularity, we have to be able to distinguish what's real life and what's virtual. Absolutely. That's a great point, by the way. So this is sort of... Like, you know, I think the next thing is going to be, you know, the, the glasses, you know, Apple's about to come out with in the in 2021, the virtual glasses, 2022, right? mm -hmm. they're going to come out with the, the, the virtual glasses, the augmented reality it's glasses, gonna, right? it's going to be a part of us and we're, it's going to be so real, you know, and I, don't, I can't predict anything, but at one point in our lives, we'll be living with robots and not even know it. Absolutely. These guys could pass the Turing test. Mm-hmm. You know, this consciousness. Mm -hmm. We have to recognize what's human and not. Mm -hmm. So what you're, what you're saying essentially is that so our physical reality, we're going to essentially experience a bifurcation. And what I mean by that is our society, our existence, our, the way we live life is going to split into two, which is the physical reality and the digital reality. Mm -hmm. Right? Exactly. So we're going to have to now come up with concrete definitions of those two realities and differentiate them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the disorientation is just going to continue. People are just going to be, be confused. People today are confused by the internet. And the internet is just a small aspect of technology. So you can imagine what happens when AI gets fully developed. What do you think happens then? And we have two realities. Like you said, Apple is building... 
Apple is building what the um, the the augmented reality glasses. Uh, there's um there's Oculus by Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. A lot of these companies are trying to get into this arena, right? But what they're doing is they're developing and building entire ecosystems like our Earth, except in a digital format. So we are we are opening up our fourth dimension as from, humans. For, exactly. I think from that perspective, that's exactly what we're doing. We're literally creating new real estate. But except this real estate is the real estate of the mind. And wow. the real estate of the mind wow. is infinite. Wow. From that perspective, right? It's infinite. Wow. So essentially, the freedom, the degree of freedom in that reality is infinite. So imagine taking someone from this world and putting them in a world where the degree of freedom of reality is, is infinite. Yes. Uh, mental, you know. We can't handle us. Our, our, Brains are on wire for that. It's crazy. But also think of the, the the medical uses. How how many things that can be fixed based on tapping into this part of the mind. Exactly. And changing what happened in the past. You know, because mm. we've already biomapped the brain, and you know we know how it works. Exactly. We can digitalize it. Mm -hmm. We can fix you know speech problems. Mm -hmm. We can fix a lot of things. We're already fixing a lot of things with AI today. Yeah. Like, for wow. example, the COVID-19, the COVID also known as the coronavirus. Yep. The company Alibaba, founded by uh, the Chinese uh, founder, Jack Ma, um, he recently, I think he came out and said that they have an AI system that they developed that can diagnose the corona, diagnose a patient that is positive or is tested uh, um, um, positive for coronavirus, diagnosed within 16 seconds. Based on antibodies, I'm not sure what the technology. The it's an AI system, so it, oh. it it has the capability to diagnose patients within 16 seconds of, of meeting them based on based on I guess. The, Where was this developed? In China, I'm guessing it's developed by this the company is recently. Alibaba. Yeah, I read it on news. Uh, it was a couple of days ago actually, oh, wow. so it's pretty recent. So um, we are actually maybe braced for an for an economic uh, retrieval, I guess. Yeah, or, uh, uh, re rebound in a sense. Um, well, just because uh, something can be diagnosed doesn't mean that's that true. doesn't mean that a pandemic can be halted. Yeah, because that's once, also true. Because yeah. once you reach a certain threshold, right, and uh, enough people have been uh, uh, essentially infected with the with the with the with the, with the virus, that is dormant for three weeks. Essentially, well, not dormant, but it's, it's invisible for two weeks. They're infecting everyone on Earth. That's a good point. Um, they're gonna keep it. You can find them, but how are you gonna? How how are you going to get them from infecting other people? They don't know they're infected. They have no symptoms. Hmm. It's it, a step in the technology. Check it out on this. T t look at this perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine if you have a bunch of um, you say you have a bunch of uh, mice infestations, right? Mm -hmm. You don't. You, you're not gonna kill one or two. You're gonna go to the nest and kill all the mice. All of them. So. What do you think? But check it out. But now the mice are humans. From that perspective, how do you deal with that? It's catastrophic, isn't it? Eventually, that is what's going to happen. That's what I. That's 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 the scary part. Is that we don't know. It may not even be in our lifetime. Yeah. But at some point, hmm. I don't know because humans are paving the way for all this. You know, the space exploration. The robots need us. If not, you know, immediately within, I'm saying immediately, like within the next 200 years, immediately. They're like, we're I good, think that's we're a good. long time, as a matter of fact. I think the time frames are get, should, should be getting smaller because technology is getting smart so fast, so much faster than it okay, used to. Okay, so let's say 100 years. I say, I say within half a century, 50 years. Yeah, 50, oh wow. Okay. So they're going to need us to go to other. You know, if if we have internet lines to other planets, have you seen um have you seen the elevator that they're they're that they're just like built that they're building from the moon to to Earth? The space elevator. It's, yeah, the space elevator. Well, I don't know. It's, 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 it's like a concept, or I think it might still be in a concept phase. But essentially, the whole point of it is to create an intergalactic intergalactic civilization. Which, if you think about it, that's gonna be our goal as human beings because. The idea that we're gonna be able to survive on this planet for another hundred, hundred, hundred million years, one million years, five hundred thousand—we don't. That's uncertainty is high. 
Yeah. Right. So how do you guarantee that our race is able to essentially maintain its existence by finding other places where we can put our genetic material and let it develop? Like, example, Elon Musk trying to make sure we can colonize Mars. And if we can colonize Mars, guess what's going to happen next? We can colonize other planets. Right. That's the goal. The goal is to create an intergalactic civilization. Wow. The space elevator is going to cost a lot of money. Six to build. billion. Approximately six billion, they said. That's, That's not cool. enough if you can do some crowdfunding. I would say the estimates are probably on the low end of things. I'll have to double that amount. Yeah, no, probably it, triple. Yeah. Sometimes look it, at this. Towering 22,000 miles above Earth. I think the idea of a physical space elevator is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of absurd. I think there has to be some new know, technology. It's come in from Florida. There's gonna, it gonna, gonna, there has to be some kind of new technology that is able to bypass all the we'll build one by 2050 tokyo you have to be able china to get to through gravity 2045 yeah china want to build one in 20 the chinese government is very innovative man and they they and they have and they have elevated. centralized command which is also very important sometimes to get for action to happen you know as, as opposed to a bureaucracy like a lot of other countries mm -hmm. it's humans up there imagine that if something bad happens, if we'll all be able to fit on Mars. I, I'm not sure about the logistics of that, but well, not the poor people. Honestly, hundred thousand dollars might be on the lower end of things. It might be on the lower end, yeah. <laughs> you gotta have five mil. <laughs> because because a lot of people have hundred thousand dollars. So how do you determine who's able to go? You have to create. You have to create more. Um, Control. You can have eight billion people on Mars. Exactly. <laughs> the goal and isn't to get, and they're looking at Earth like, oh shit, Earth's blowing up. But we will be able to escape what the dinosaurs went through. Exactly. But That's the whole insurance people, policy. That's people. why Elon Musk gets funded because he's an insurance policy to human existence. That's Literally. why he gets funded. When, when people always ask the questions like, why would you spend that much money on going to Mars when we can just give the money to poor people or whatever? But it's like they, they're, they're essentially every, the government is betting on the fact that he could essentially save our civilization from that perspective. You know what I'm saying? It's deeper than that. He's a futurist. He's a futurist, and he's proven himself. Elon Musk. Shout out Elon Musk. Shout out Elon. He's proven himself, man. This guy has started so many companies successfully, made so much wealth for other people, which is more important than wealth for himself. People always focus on wealth for themselves. He's made other people extremely, extremely wealthy. African tradition. Free your mind, no prison. Stop for the division. It's China versus the USA right now. That's the future of the world. It's the Cold War Part 3. Cold War Part fucking 3. So Russia is not even a, com a competitor. They really aren't. They're, they're cyber com competitors. They're picking it. They're, Russia is picking a side. Yeah, You're either yeah gonna, they are. And I mean, China's still communist too. So thank, you. Like, you know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Russia's going to pick China's side. And Europe, which is always already economically deficient in a way because they're billing each other out you got brexit germany they're gonna be sustaining on the european economy the, yeah the axis powers versus you know well, what's the other side i think the chinese allies, allies i think the chinese are underestimated and it's kind of amazing to me that that they are because they have a long history of not like of being great Chinese Empire yeah they've been around for a very long time and they're organized relatively of course yeah. damn hard. and their system is built in a way where if they want something to be done it's done like I believe the longest bridge in the world is in China it's like miles and miles long. They were like, yeah. bro, we want to connect two cities that no other person in the world would be like, what the fuck? That's, 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 that bridge is too long. They built it. Is it Shenzhen? I'm trying to see what they have. The, 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 the government decreed that they're like, build a bridge. Chinese and the bridge was built. Bridge. 
So from that perspective, when it comes to action, longest bridge. I mean, I guess that's the battle of the of the eastern versus the western systems. It connects Macau and the mainland mainland Chinese city in Zhuhai. How many miles is the bridge? It costs twenty billion dollars. It costs twenty billion dollars to build. Four hundred thousand tons of steel. Jesus Christ! Wow. Did it give you enough a... to build sixty Eiffel towers? Twenty billion. Twenty billion. You know that's relatively. That's easy. That's relatively. Well, that's pretty expensive, even for a government project. Nah. Twenty billion dollars. Think about the economical long term that's that's what they're thinking which yeah, is smart probably gonna make 70 billion which and which is why system that bridge would not be built no it wouldn't the main bridge alone <laughs> is 6.29 billion it will drill it will generate trillions one trillion euros for the economy simple math 10 trillion yuan but one hong kong lawmaker cast doubt on that figure those are the the, the uh, naysayers to call yeah, them. The, uh, <laughs> in fact, the bridge's maintenance costs will already take away a third of this income. Okay, well, think of the long-term effect again. Thank you. It's like, why do we have to build that road? Why don't we just take the long way? But the long way takes seven hours. If we take this road, it takes us 30 minutes. That literally just saved us wow. eight hours of traveling. miles. You know, thirty-four miles. A thirty-four mile long bridge. Thirty-four miles long bridge over this is water. A, them building the bridge right, as they as water. they go. They literally put in as they go the some the some the, the the steel in the in the ocean. Dude, that is and insane. people can drive on it that and transport insane. goods. And it saves them the new hours. Silk Road. Hours and hours of travel. Not to mention all their developments in Africa. The Chinese government. All these loans. They, they, all these, they're, they're, they're building. They have a 300 year plan. They're, they're thinking they're thinking a thousand years ahead. Exactly. They're, like they're leaders. Leader. And they're leaders. They're leaders. Wow. The we can wall of China. we can say whatever we want to say, man. But you cannot ignore the accomplishments. You cannot ignore civilizations that do not collapse of after thousands and thousands of years of existence, bro. You know, three, can, four miles. We've only been on this earth, and we've only been in America. Well, America has only existed for about what? How many years? Yeah, like a few centuries. Exactly. We underestimate a lot of other people. As a matter of fact, cultures. How long has Russia been a country? They've, they've been the Soviet Union. We can't even get from San Francisco to New York. From fucking D.C. to Atlanta. And, and build an underground train. Isn't that crazy? You know, we have to have emissions and cars. and. We have to have the, the, the what's it called, the new green deal? It got shit. It's trash. <laughs> Let's force in forcing the market onto people you don't force the market onto, onto people the market fixes itself that's the way yeah. it works you can't tell people in businesses especially not to use gas anymore like who are you bro what are you talking about just find an alternative implement an alternative put money to the alternative then people won't then people naturally as the market sets itself will not use the cars that with the gasoline and you know they'll be presented with a faster alternative let their car shoot them through a tunnel elon Musk developed uh tesla and and and, and from use? just from economic value people adapted to his cars not because not because they hate gasoline cars people still like gasoline cars but they're like wait mm -hmm. If I have this electric car and I have a charge for free, I can literally just never have to worry about gas anymore. So economically, from that perspective, I will transition to that if I can afford it. That's how the market works. Value. You know? Supply and demand. You don't force people, you don't force half of the of an economy out of business because you want to implement your 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 ideologies based on 
which are completely sometimes subjective, bro, as a matter of fact. You know? It's based on the idea that the world's going to end in 12 years, as AOC says. You know? It's like, bro, there's, they've been doomsday predictions since the beginning of time. That's why they had no Shadamas. Yeah. You know? 